to the channel. My name is Crawford. This is Virginia is for Lowriders. And today we are getting back on the unnecessary tubing, unpopular opinion, traditional body drop, where I ramble, because that's what I do. So if you've never been here before, expect a little rambling and a little bit of work. Last week, we, uh, we started the, again, unpopular opinioned traditional body drop which seems like some people really are very aggressive towards the fact that i'm doing this but it's cool we cut the front frame rails we cut the entire perimeter of the floor i got this thing set down on the pinch weld and if you haven't seen it go check out that video the whole floor is cut out floor pans in the front are clearanced Everything is separated here. Everything is cut on the seam weld around the entire thing, and it's just sitting there. So what we need to do first is come in here because this stuff is literally just kind of sitting here. We need to get this straight on both sides, prep the metal, tack weld that in position, go inside the cab, prep the metal, Tack weld the back cab wall in position and start filling in all of the gaps. So if you've never been here before, again, I'm Crawford. This is Virginia's for Lowriders. Go back and check out all of the build that we've been doing so far with all of this unnecessary tubing and heavy stuff. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Let's uh, get into it and try not to ramble a whole bunch because we get off topic and we do that. But it's cool. Yeah, but yeah, subscribe. So one thing that we did come across last week is the fact that during all of these measurements that I took, it's kind of hard to tell where the front end is going to land because at the back of the cab, it is an inch and a half body drop. And by the time you get all the way to the front, it's like two and a quarter inches or something like that. I wasn't sure of what that measurement would be. I took a rough guesstimation and I thought that I was going to be clear, which I'm only off by like not even a half of an inch. But the fender wells are touching the tires when the truck is laid out. So I know I could run a little tire, which I'd really rather not do. So I'm just going to cut it out. I ordered fenders. They came in today. So... Y'all will, uh, I'm not sure on this video, maybe I'll at least get these cut out, but in the near future, there will be a video of how to put tubs in. I don't really like to say how to because, I mean, I don't really follow strict, this is how you have to do this thing because it doesn't matter. It is all custom car work. It's just however you want it to look. So I'll show you a rough how I do it. And then you can interpret that as you will and come up with your own thing. But get these open real quick, see what they look like, because I actually haven't seen them yet. This is kind of weird. I saw on the listing you could get an option where these weren't welded on yet is kind of cool because it's like I don't know either 16 or 18 gauge steel which I'm not using that I'm on there but I can use it somewhere else and some trailer fenders it's kind of taking the easy road but I mean if you've seen the back of the truck we didn't really take the easy road up until now so I can I can slack off here and there Traditional body drops, easy road too, but we're rambling. Let's get to work and try to get this thing set in place to where when we're welding stuff together, it's not crooked. Like I said in the last video, I bought this 
stuff to cover windows, which I've always used tape and cardboard and whatever else I have laying around that I can tape onto the glass. But I think that hopefully this stuff is worth it. I've seen that uh, getting used on TV a bunch over the years, so it's got to be something to it, I guess. And I don't know if uh, y'all have ever been down that road, but it really sucks ruining glass just because you didn't feel like covering it up. And then forever and ever, the glass is ruined and you always have these little tiny speckles that you feel, you can see them, they rust. It's pretty terrible. Just grinding dust, or grinding alone will embed little stuff in glass. So we're gonna give this a shot. Yep. Brent, there's definitely a reason that it, you tint all of my vehicles. So, the factory floor along this seam kicks out and comes back in, so it swells out about an inch or so. I don't think I'm going to use this. That's actually part of the structure on the inside, so I don't really feel bad about, say, even covering this up because it wouldn't matter. Because it's the whole inside of that shaped weird. So I'm thinking if I just make this basically the underside of the truck, it'll be alright. So I'm going to fill these holes in, and then I think it would look nicer... When you like open the door and there's carpet in here. I'd like to make, after it's all said and done, a filler piece that fills this little gap between the carpet and the plastic molding. So if I made that filler piece, maybe painted it the same color as the carpet, it might look okay. So I'm thinking square this entire length of the floorboard up as one even cut so I just got to figure out what to make that cut I'm thinking everything but but the corners will match that cut and I'll make the corners square because the corner is actually the body mount so I, wanna, I don't really want to take away any material from that if I don't have to so I just need to come up with an imaginary line draw it all the way across and then cut this again and I believe I'll be making a filler panel to come from that edge to this edge that way it's square and even all the way down and it's more appealing to look at so I'll mark that out and go from there day two. So I got that trimmed nice and even-ish all the way across. Got all the metal prepped here. So I think I'm going to do the same thing on the other side before I start making filler panels and go from there. edge of this I want to basically come off of this main floorboard and then recreate the factory swoop up so 
the thing that I'm going to be welding in there, I need to form into the corner and up at the same time. And to get a good cut on that, I need to come up with a way in order to mark that out. So I want to go straight out, but I want to come up a little bit that way. I have something to build up to. So kind of thinking something like this is probably going to be the easiest solution to lay this out. Sorry, it's kind of dark in here. I need to get a light set up, but this would be roughly where my line would need to be. There's little ridges in the floor, so the line changes a little bit. I'm just going to basically pick a line from there and go up. But same thing for in the corner. All the way around this edge. So now that that's marked out, sort of, kind of, I'm just going to go through and cut that line. And that way I can make my template. Well, it's, uh, I don't know, like the third or something day of the week. It's Saturday. I'll say that. I don't know what day I started doing this. Came out here every night for, let's say like an hour. And in those hours, I got this side finished up. Well, this from here to here finished up. 
and metal worked and looking pretty good it is welded in this seam which it kind of looks like crap on camera it looks spotty but it's it's completely solid and welded so the other day we got this welded in two spots I have a pretty massive gap between those two I'm trying to think of how I can close that gap up and I came up with this you got a pry bar wedged in here you got a ratchet strap set on here Let's see. so ratcheting that pry bar in there and go a little bit more but it pretty much closes that gap completely up that pry bar. Hopefully I don't end up breaking a window because of that thing or something. But yeah, I think I can weld that guy together. We'll have to make filler panels for the little areas, but that'll be like at least half of that cab wall welded together. So today we're just going to get some more stuff done. We're just going to keep welding. So yeah, we're going to get back to work and try to knock some of this stuff out between today and tomorrow. I'm hoping to have like the majority of the body drop done. That way it's a, a two weekend deal and everything's finished up. I do have to order some stuff for the steering. I've been going back and forth. I'm not sure if I want to just notch the top of that arm and let it go. I'm kind of thinking a universal joint here and a universal joint with some new shafts. Might look cleaner to get rid of this big old bulky oldness and clean it up a little bit to dodge that arm a little bit because I'm not doing the standard mini truck thing where you cut the firewall out and move all it up. I don't see that being worth my time. I'd much rather spend 50 bucks or whatever it is, make the steering look nicer, get rid of all of these nasty joints. I understand 100% that this is supposed to be collapsible for accents and stuff, but let's be real about it. It's a, it's a mini truck from the 80s. It's not the safest thing in the world anyway. And every bit of it's been cut and welded on. So... We're going to start thinking about safety right now? I don't think so. Oh, before I forget to mention it, I did a little test fit with the interior panel. And the way that I did the floor, actually, I'm going to show you all that since I haven't shown you that yet. The way that I did the floor, I believe I can trim this along this edge once the carpet comes in. So the new carpet, I figure, it's going to stop probably about here. If I play my cards right, I won't actually have to make a filler panel. I can use these factory, whatever these are called, and, or kicks, I don't know, whatever they're called. If I trim this right with the new carpet in there, I don't think you'll be able to tell at all just by a glance, like, unless you're a mini trucker, then of course you would, but I don't think you'd be able to tell right off the bat, like, opening the door so that anything's been done. So, not that I care, but, yeah. It kind of solves an issue with making a filler panel if I can get that to work. Actually, hopefully, just with a little bit of trimming, maybe that'd be the case. Even if... I could take and cut this lip off and maybe heat this stuff up or cut along that line there. Because I figure the carpet from the factory has to stop at least here. I don't know. I'm rambling. Let's just get back to work. It's already late. It's like 8 o'clock or something like that.
that felt like it took forever, but it's cool. Got corner welded, whole center welded, and the same thing with the corner over there. So that's like three quarters of the cab wall. Only thing I need to do is on the low spots here, 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 and there, figure out how to fill that gap. I might be able to massage it inwards with some beading. Just depends on if I can make it look good. I might be able to pie cut it, fold it in, weld it up. Not sure. Not sure where I want to go with that. So, whenever I'm doing this, I'm just constantly thinking about how the carpet is going to lay because anytime you do this, regardless if it's a traditional body drop or a stock floor body drop or channeling or anything, there's still sheet metal stuff required. If, if this was a stock floor body drop, most likely the trans tunnel would still have to get modified because you're bringing everything down around the trans tunnel and the transmission's getting close to it. Not so much with the factory five speed because there is that transmission is so tiny, but like if this was like a, anything else pretty much. So keeping the carpet in mind, anytime you're doing this, you have to figure out or think about where the carpet's going to lay because a lot of carpets are pre-molded or 90% of them unless you're buying some really generic aftermarket stuff. It's pre-molded to the shape of the floor. So if you go changing the shape of the floor drastically, you're going to mess up where that carpet is going to lay, if that makes sense. So all of this was cut out. These two pieces were separated. It's kind of hard to see. This is separate from this piece. So I need to either section this and bring it down section that and bring it up to the tunnel to where when the carpet's laying in here there isn't this crazy jog thing that's going to make the carpet floppy or way too tight in the corner and then affect my foot pedals so I'm kind of thinking about splitting the difference I have a little bit of wiggle room this let me try and hold this to where you can actually see this move. The floor is very easily movable. So I'm kind of thinking splitting the difference, like not cranking this thing down as far as it'll go, but somewhere, somewhere in the middle. That way it doesn't get into contact with anything here. I got underneath and made sure that it wouldn't be affecting anything underneath the truck. It gives me a little bit of that foot room back, which again, it's not very much. It's not even two inches through here. So I'm gaining back an inch of that foot room easily. I can measure it out and try and figure out exactly how much it is. So I'm kind of thinking, push down on that, throw a screw in here, build this, weld all this together, and the same thing on the other side at the same time. And then, after this guy is completely finished up, and so is that one, going in and taking out that inch of trans tunnel instead of whatever this actually is up here. I don't know if all of that made sense, but that's what we're going to try to do. I feel like this video is already probably getting kind of long, so I need to stop rambling. And hurry up.
Well, I'm back. It's Sunday, and we gotta get some stuff done so I can get this video finished up. So, the camera died when I was out here last night, and it was like 12.30 at night. I put a nice little swell in this panel. I don't know if it picks up on the camera that well. Just enough to achieve that curve in that corner. And then this is a, of course this still needs to be metal finished, but a curled edge that's picked up and shaped like this at the same time. So this, once I get done metal finishing it, will fit inside of here and appear to be sort of ish factory and debating so all of these terminate here I was debating on I'm not sure if it really matters I was gonna run the bead roller on these two lines here maybe just up a little bit in this panel I'm not sure I don't really know if it matters because all of this stuff is another carpet and metal finishing like this to something that's under the carpet really isn't necessary but I know it's under there and potentially thousands of people now know what's under there so might as well make it look somewhat respectable but I'm gonna take a break from this because my ADD is just freaking out about how much we've spent concentrating on the floor we're gonna mess with the frame rails for a little bit and then bounce back into here because I can't just do the same thing for hours on end because my mind doesn't allow it. So let's do that. Stop rambling and get back to hopefully some like instant gratification stuff on the frame rails. Hopefully that goes by pretty quick. Got the 50 layers of paint off the top of this guy. Got this for the most part metal finished. Like I said, all that's cleaned up. This is metal finished almost completely. There's gonna be a very, very long day of just going through and metal finishing and grinding and grind like a day where I put a mask on and grind for hours and sand and everything for a long time to get. There's a lot of paint on this thing. It looks like it was painted black a long time ago, then primed with some really thick primer, then painted silver. And when it was here, I put some black on top of it to try to get rid of some of the silver. There's a lot of paint, but I don't want to take it off the jack stands just yet. But when I do move the jack stands, I will do this same boxing thing underneath. So it'll be exactly like this, but on the bottom side. I'll do that later. I'm not too pressed on doing it now. At least I know that none of this can move around and it's all looking pretty good. So now, because I'm running out of Sunday, I run out of time here. I'm going to get this uh, screwed in with some tech screws, probably here and here. That way it's held in place. I'll go on from the bottom side, trace around the hole with the Sharpie, cut it, and fit it into this. and see if we can get this guy at least started to weld in here. For this corner, since this is making contact, 
I want to massage this down and this down while the panel's in here because everything else fits pretty good if you actually hold it in place. But as you can see, this panel is a lot bigger than that area, so this wavy edge from all the hammering will get cut off. This is going to get cut probably back to about here. And yeah, we're going to try and get this welded in there and then at least start making this on the other side. Maybe we'll cut some fender wells out and try to get this Sunday finished up. And uh, yeah, we'll try and just make a little bit more progress before I completely run out of day. Yesterday I started really, really late. And today I started pretty late. And then some friends came over today. And yeah, I'm slacking. Really slacking. Now I'm rambling. So let's get back to work. Well, I thought that I was going to be able to trim the top edge of this and then trim the bottom of this to make the panel fit the floor and then I just laid underneath the truck and that's not really the case this is a little worse than I thought it was I started peeling away at uh, some of this and it's pretty darn bad so if my screw's there and my panel stops a little after my screw, if I cut it off a little past the screw, I will be cutting off all of that nasty rust. And hopefully, that's all the rest of the rust that I find on the entire truck. So, I got this gap here. So if I do the same thing again with the panel, I figure the panel stops somewhere around here, if I trim this to fit my panel, this will just flow into the inner fenders. And same thing with this guy. So it's going to add another 30 or so minutes worth of work, but it's work I would have had to have done regardless of the body drop because that rust is so rough. So I'll mark it out. And Get to cutting. welded all the way through here everything but the corner I need to take these pedals out to actually gain access to this because while I was trying to move everything around I ended up actually pushing this away so I need to take the pedal out and figure out a way to clamp these two together and actually get that gap welded up I also need to trim I didn't want to trim this until I knew where exactly where this was going to lay, so I need to trim this at the same time so it can be butt welded instead of overlapped. But don't look too bad so far. You got plenty of room for the pedal. This is going to go down further. Plenty of room for this guy. There's actually a little swell in here to make room for this guy. So. Barely anything lost. I don't, uh, I don't think it looks too bad so far. But I'm going to take a break on this. I really don't feel like getting up under that pedal. It is super smoky in here. I'm going to run the exhaust fan a little bit. I'm going to try to cut out one of those fenders. And I think we're going to call it quits for tonight. So let's do that real quick.
we got the fender wells cut out. And I still gotta cut some more. Need to take a measurement from down there, but I don't think I'm at where I need to be yet. I got some, got about three quarters of an inch of room here. Still making contact up here though. So I hope I don't have to get into the firewall. I really, really hope I don't have to get into the firewall. I'm okay with the truck when it lays out completely, like frame on the ground, tire touching. That's fine with me. As long as it's not like resting the weight on it, I think would be all right. I don't know. I'd I prefer it to have plenty of clearance while it's laid out, but I'm not sure if I'm going to get that without just cutting it up a whole lot more. And if it is the case, then it is what it is. It's part of it, I guess. But we made pretty decent progress. Both of these guys, the rear cab, driver's side footwell's almost done. So if y'all check back in next week, we will be doing the cab corners. I'm gonna try to come up with something for the bottom side of the cab to weld the cab mounts back together. We'll be jacking it up after all of that's welded together, finishing the front frame horns, and then the body drop's done. Then it's a matter of redoing the front tubs, which that'll probably be its own video from start to finish. And yeah, just ADDing our way like we normally do, bouncing around to everything. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to check back in next week. Again, if you've never been here before, go back and watch all of the previous stuff where we put all the spaghetti together and the exhaust and everything else that has to do with the Mazda project and we'll be getting on other projects hopefully soon I'd really like to just drive this thing it's sitting in the garage for however many months it's been yeah enough rambling see y'all next time